Hello, it's Jake here. Welcome to The Voluntary Life. This is part one of a series of episodes on the subject of entrepreneurship. And we're talking about entrepreneurship because I think it's one of the best ways of finding freedom in an unfree world. Our working lives take up such a huge proportion of our time and energy and life force that the extent to which you can get freedom in your work, in what is what it is that you, you do to make a living, has a huge impact on how much freedom you actually live on a day-to-day basis. So I think entrepreneurship is a really important and exciting thing to consider if you're interested in getting more freedom into your life. By definition, taking the risk and responsibility of starting your own business is having the freedom to do the work that you choose um, in the way that you want on the, on whatever it is that you want to work on. And of course, there is the very significant difference of being your own boss, of not actually working for somebody else, which you know, in real terms, that is a significant life change in terms of how much freedom you actually experience on a day-to-day level. But also, entrepreneurship is the only way to get a significant amount of uh, financial freedom. I mean, your wealth really does come from your career. Nobody gets rich off passive investing. Uh, it just doesn't doesn't really happen. And, I mean, virtually nobody inherits a significant amount of wealth. So I think entrepreneurship is the real way to actually find a degree of financial freedom. It's just very hard to accumulate significant savings when you're working for somebody else. And of course, there is the there is a scale in terms of entrepreneurship from the sort of unjobbing alternative, which we've talked about in other podcasts, which is really about restricting your expenditure, working for yourself as a freelancer or doing um, various projects onto actually taking the risk and responsibility of starting your own business. And that's really what um, what this series is going to be about. So just as a background, I've got over 10 years' experience as an entrepreneur myself. I founded a company in 2000, and I took on one business partner at the start. So the business was owned between the two of us. And we funded the business entirely from our own savings and from significant personal loans that we were personally liable for. And we bootstrapped the business. We grew it. uh, And it took us five years uh, growing the business until we paid off all the initial loans. And then we continued to grow it until after eight years, uh, we sold the business to a much larger company in a trade sale. And then after that, I worked for three years uh, with the, the company that bought my business um, in, as part of an earnout agreement. And that three-year period then finished uh, last year. Um, and so that project is now finished for me. I have nothing further to do with uh, the company. And it was an amazing experience. It changed my life. Uh, it changed my whole outlook and understanding of how voluntary relationships work of how the economy works it taught me so much about negotiating with other people about how wealth gets generated how value gets generated and about the potential for win-win solutions and voluntary interaction to create wealth and from all of those things that i learned uh, it fundamentally changed uh, my goals and my outlook on on what I want to do with my life and, and what's important for me. And I've got a lot of friends who are interested in entrepreneurship uh, and thinking about starting their own business. And so I thought it would be great to start up a conversation about it. When I started, I was lucky enough to have a friend who was a few years older than me who'd already had quite a lot of experience in entrepreneurship. And I found it so helpful talking to him. I learned a huge amount from him. And, and so I would love to be able to, to help if, um, you know, if I can. And I do want to say that, oh my God, 
did I make some mistakes. I knew so little when I started. I made an embarrassing amount of mistakes. So this is not coming from any perspective of me being a uh, super entrepreneur or anything like that. Quite the opposite. I hope that um, I hope at least that you know having had some had the experience and made those mistakes that that can be useful as well. And in the end, I'm I'm very happy with the way that things turned out. So I hope that uh, I can provide some useful feedback to the to the discussion. And I also recommend, really recommend that if you if you know entrepreneurs in your life, um, if you're thinking about doing it, seek them out, talk to them, you know absorb as much as you can um, from people who who've had the experience i found it um incredibly helpful because of course this none of this stuff gets taught in school sadly uh, kids are just totally insulated from entrepreneurial life so i look forward to having a great conversation about it and i'd be really interested to hear any comments or questions or feedback that you may have so I thought it would be interesting to start by covering a question that um, one of my friends asked about entrepreneurship, which is, how do you decide on what entrepreneurial project to take on? And also, when you do have an idea and you have uh, decided on your project, how do you overcome the fear of jumping in? And I think these are great questions, really good questions. Um some of the things that come to mind for me um, are that, I mean, entrepreneurship is going to be such a lot of work and it is pretty scary getting started. Um, that it, Choosing the project that you really can believe in and feel good about is, is really important. It's something that you're going to, this project, whatever you do, is something that you're going to have to talk about thousands of times. You're going to have so many meetings where you explain to people, um, you know, what your business is about, what it is that you do, whether they be potential clients or potential staff or just your friends and family and so forth. So I think it's got to be something that you have a huge personal interest in and curiosity about and fascination with. And it's something that you've, you have to be able to talk convincingly about and, and with, you know, you have to be able to enthuse people about this project because you will be the prime source of enthusiasm for the project in the many ways that's your job and so you know if it's just an idea that you have which is some kind of technical uh, widget that is sort of a bit like you know a, a technical solution in search of a problem that's not going to be something that other people are going to be able to really get behind and you know man the barricades for there's got to be something that people can, that you can talk about in a way that really captures people's emotional commitment to the project. And it's also got to be something that gets you out of bed in the morning. You know, if you're going to be doing all of this hard work on it, it has to be something that you feel is worth doing with your life. If you find, if you think you've found a project which is just a kind of clever market opportunity, there's a bit of a gap in this market, you could probably make some, some good money by doing something. That's the kind of idea that I think would be great for a passive investment if you just wanted to, you know, put some money into um, a stock that you thought was going to be particularly good in future and or so forth. But that really, at least for me, that wouldn't be enough to get me out of bed every morning and really, you know, go off and, and do the work. So with all of that in mind, I think that for it to work, the choice of project for entrepreneurship really has to be something that you want to do because you want to change the world and you want to make the world a better place. And, I mean, it's funny, in our culture, when you talk about changing the world and making the world a better place, people think about politicians, you know, who talk about such things. And they think about political activism, you know, on the on the extreme end from just, you know, the latest election campaign to the other extreme, you know, the kind of Che Guevara t-shirt with a guy holding up his AK-47 going for the revolution. That's what people think of when they think of the idea of changing the world in our culture. And that is all a terribly destructive and evil fantasy because nothing 
good ever comes from violent revolution and nothing good ever comes from forcing change through political coercion that isn't the way that the world gets better that's not that's not what the real revolutionaries are the real revolutionaries are the entrepreneurs what entrepreneurs do is give people opportunities and choices that weren't there previously and all the good things that we have in terms of progress or civilization or whatever you want to call it, the environments that we live in, the products we use, and the social changes that, those, that have taken place because of the opportunities that we have. Behind every one of those, there were entrepreneurs who worked and sweated to, t to make an idea into reality because they wanted to change the world and make the world a better place. And so... I think the way to find a, a, an entrepreneurial project that you can really fly with is to think of yourself as a revolutionary and go out and change the world and make the world a better place. And, you know, it doesn't have to be Steve Jobs or Richard Branson. I mean, my company was tiny. It doesn't even show up on the radar of any metric compared to any of the large companies that you would have heard of. It was a very, very specialist field, um, doing a very, very specialist thing. But it was something that I really believed in and really felt strongly about. And, and that's what I think you need in order to make the project work. If you can find something to do that you think will make the world a better place, choose a project in an area that, where you wake up every morning feeling outraged at how things are done at the moment. Find something where you feel disgusted and sad at the terrible waste of human effort and potential in the way that people have to do things now because they don't have any choice. And where you feel excited about what joy and pleasure and love could be unleashed by you providing the service that you do. Even if that service is something that is only applicable to a very small market in your hometown you know, it doesn't matter. That's still changing the world to make the world a better place. Because so much is going to change in terms of the business as when you get going. You know, the technology will change. Your exact focus of how you sell the product will change. But it's, you have to, there has to be something underneath all that that you can really believe in. You know, that the, the area that you're working in is something that you really think is worthwhile and good work because that's what will get you out of bed in the morning and in terms of the other question of you know how you overcome the fear of jumping in the fear doesn't go away but if you really believe in what you're doing and if you really feel strongly that this should be done because it would give people freedom and choice and a better the potential for a better life however specific and small that intervention is then you will as the saying goes, you'll feel, you'll feel the fear and you'll do it anyway. And if you do become an entrepreneur, you will be a revolutionary, one of the real social revolutionaries. And if you do it right, you will change the world. And I wish you all the best in doing so. Good luck on your revolution. And thank you so much for listening.